All right, thanks everyone for joining us today. We're here to talk to you all about GA Gives on Giving Tuesday and really today focus primarily on touring the new GAGives.org platform. My name is Bethany. I'm here from the Mighty Cause team and I'm joined today by Betsy from the Georgia Center for Nonprofits. Uh, I'll let her uh, kick us off with a little bit of introduction uh, from the GCN side and the transition to a new GAGives.org platform. And then I'll take it away to spend the majority of today's time really going through the details of what you can do on the new platform, how to build your page, how to get registered for the event, all that great stuff. So Betsy, go ahead and take it away. Hey everyone, uh, before Bethany gets started, I just wanted to say hello, wanted to introduce myself. This is my third year leading this initiative and I'm very excited as always to kick off a season bright and early. We're doing it earlier every year because we hear feedback from you all that you wanna think of this as part of your full year development campaign and we couldn't agree more. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of support from us that talks about how GIA Gives on Giving Tuesday fits into that not just as a standalone event, but thinking of it in a bigger picture way to attract new donors and to engage more deeply with your supporters. So a couple of quick notes I wanted to share with you. One is a shout out to this partnership with Mighty Cause. We are so thrilled to have launched this new GeorgiaGives.org. I hope you're as excited about it as we are. Um, this is gonna be a fantastic partnership. I've been working with Bethany and the team for the last quarter to get this site up and running and there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Um, we chose them because after we looked around at the options, we, we really came to the absolutely clear conclusion that they had created a superior giving day platform. It is mobile first. I would ask you all to go check it out on your phone. It is a gorgeous interface. User friendly, both for donors and for you all, very importantly, and just rich with features. Features to engage donors, features to support you in developing your campaigns. Uh, we've just been super impressed by the way they have thought through every step of the user journey for both you and for the and for the donors. Um, so take a look at the site. Please have a look around and be sure to look in the nonprofit section and check out the FAQs. And I think you'll get answers, hopefully, to every question you might have. Uh, and if you don't, I'll tell you how you can get some answers as well from us. Um, while you're in there, keep in mind that you are seeing the site in a pre-event mode. So right now it's focused on you, on getting you registered, on providing you with support. Come November 1st, when the campaign officially begins, this site is going to transform into campaign mode and it'll all be donor first positioning and features. Why should you register early? I know that the campaign feels far away. Um, you're on this call, which is a great start. Um, we know that it may not be at the top of your to-do list to get you signed up, but we have a couple of reasons why we, we would really urge you to do so. Um, one is the site is actually searchable by donors now. So don't miss potential opportunities to get found. Um, you also can use it as a year-round donation platform if that's of, of use to you. Um, and then once you register and you add your team members as admins to your account, you will all be receiving our communications with invitations to events and webinars throughout the summer. You'll be getting campaign planning tips from us. You'll be the first to hear about new prize announcements and we'll get you the resources as they roll out. Um, and then lastly, and I think very importantly, by spending some time in the platform now and setting up your page, you're gonna get to know the new tools and the features. And I think this is really gonna help inform your campaign planning. Um, we've got a lot planned, as I said. Here's how we're going to support you. Um, our next event is on May 17th. We're hosting an Atlanta workshop with GCN's senior consultant and our resident fundraising expert, Crystal Cherry. And she's going to really give you lots of ideas to help you jumpstart your campaign planning. Crystal is also going to be presenting a webinar later in May, so um, you'll have two opportunities there. And then we are planning a series of webinars through the summer and fall on campaign strategies and tactics who, that are led by experts from some fellow campaigners who've had great success and the Giving Tuesday team. Uh, we are planning on doing a kickoff event this year. I know you all really enjoy that. It's a highlight for me. We'll also be live streaming that. I believe we're gonna be planning that for September. And then keep in mind, you can always check out the events calendar 
uh, in our online nonprofit toolkit. It's right under the nonprofit section. It's called nonprofit toolkit, and there'll always be links there to register for events. So last but not least, I promised I would show you how to get help. So there's two ways. If you have questions about the website, um, your account, your profile, these folks on the Mighty Cause support team are the ones to go to, and that's their email. Um, if you've got any other questions or inquiries, please, please contact TCN's team at info at gagives.org. I am listening. I will respond quickly, or other members of the team will. So with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Bethany. Thank you all for joining us, and here's to a great 2019 campaign. Great. Thanks, Betsy. You bet. So I'm going to uh, share a little bit about Mighty Cause, and then we're going to jump into uh, the details that you all are looking to know. Uh, just a quick note, uh, logistically, technically, uh, you do have the option to expand your screen, so make sure that you've got your GoToWebinar um, slide opened all the way so that you can see the full presentation, and then you should also be able to see on the right-hand side uh, a dashboard that you have a little arrow that you can open it and close it. That's the way that you can ask questions if you do have any throughout. All right, so as Betsy mentioned, Mighty Call is a new partner for gagives.org, and we are really excited to uh, be able to serve as this platform and support all of you as you uh, raise funds for GA Gives Day, but also, as Betsy mentioned, it's available year-round if you need it as a year-round tool. We've been around since 2006 and really have been doing giving days that whole time. So uh, we've learned lots over the years about what's really helpful for uh, the GCN team in hosting a great event, as well as what's helpful for you all uh, participating in the event and what features you really need to drive a great campaign. So we're really excited to uh, be partners on this, this platform. All right, and now we'll get into it. So I wanna start with just a couple things that you'll need to know to get started. The very first step is actually logging into the platform. So for those of you that were previously on uh, the gagives.org site, you already had an account set up, we have created an account for you and connected it to your organization's page. So all you need to do is reset or create a new password for that email address and you'll be able to log in and you'll already have access to your organization's page. So we've streamlined that process for you so that if you had access previously, you should have it now. You'll just need to create a new password to access your account. And for anyone that's new this year and in the future, uh, there is an easy, quick registration form that you can fill out. And while you're filling out that form, you'll create a user account and request access to your organization's page on the platform. So everyone has to fill out that registration form uh, that wants to participate in uh, GA Gives on Giving Tuesday. But like I said, it's a very short form. Um, it's just that for some of you that have used the platform before, we've given you a head start by already giving you an account that you should have access to once you create a new password. Once you complete that registration form, there are five key items that you'll want to complete to be up and running and fully registered for GA Gives Day. Now, these five items are quick and easy to set up on your page, but they will really ensure that you have a good, sharp, strong looking page to engage donors and supporters for the giving day. So I'll walk you through as we go throughout the webinar where to find each of these items and how to do it, but I wanted to take a quick moment to just highlight the five key things you'll want to accomplish. All of these five items you will find on a to-do list on the home screen of your organization's page. So when you log into your account, you should see in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, uh, a drop-down menu where you can click on a dashboard that has your organization's name on it. When you open up that dashboard, the very top item that you'll see is a little icon of a home. Clicking on that will get you to your welcome screen, as you see a screenshot here, which has your GA Gives registration status that will update as you move throughout the process, as well as the to-do list, that blue box there on the lower left, that's gonna walk you through the five items that you need to complete. 
So that will be adding a background image to your organization profile page, uploading your logo to that profile page, adding a brief story and description of your organization to that profile page, creating a thank you page that all donors will see upon completing their donation to your organization. They will see this thank you page. So this is a great opportunity for your first uh, stewardship follow-up with that donor. And then the final step will be signing up for direct deposit with EFT. It's quick and easy to do that. That will ensure that you receive your disbursements quickly and in a more streamlined fashion after GA Gives Day. All right, so I mentioned earlier navigating your dashboard. That's really going to be how you move throughout the platform, build out and customize your profile page, as well as manage other key things that you'll want to have access to both year round and for the giving day. So on that dashboard, I wanted to highlight just a handful of the key icons that you'll want to follow along and know what's where. So the first one, the very top icon, as I mentioned, is this home screen that you'll see here with a little picture of the house. You can access your to-do list. You can see your GA Gives registration status. You can also see additional announcements. Uh, right now, there's an announcement that drives you to find out the resources that are available on the nonprofit toolkit. Uh, but announcements may change as we move throughout the spring and summer and leading up to the event, there may be more information there. So check back always on that home screen. The next item down is your profile page. This is the organization page that you're gonna wanna customize to tell your story. This is the link that you'll share with supporters to make their donations for GA Gives on Giving Tuesday. Clicking on that profile, you'll have the option to see both the live view that visitors and donors will see. You can also open up your editing mode so that you can edit live on page, make any of the changes that you'd like. The next item down on your dashboard is the dollar sign icon. This is going to be your access to your donor data. You'll access your donation report. You'll have the ability to customize the donor experience with a few key uh, details. You'll also have access to your disbursement reports. So whenever you receive an uh, EFT disbursement from the platform, you can access that disbursement report to reconcile your uh, funds. You'll have a campaign screen. This is something that you'll only see once you have additional campaigns and fundraisers started for your organization. So if you're not seeing it today, that's why. This is a really helpful tool if as we move throughout the year or on the giving day, you are planning to encourage peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers to start campaigns on your behalf, or you as an organization are starting multiple campaign pages to focus on you know, different areas within your work. If you have additional campaign pages, you'll have a campaign screen to manage and navigate all of those. And finally, your settings page. I'll go through some of the things you have access to in detail, um, but this is really where you manage your overall presence, adding additional administrators, which will make sure that they all get access to uh, the GA Gives emails. So those are your key items on the dashboard at a high level. And now we'll dig into really what's, what's helpful and important where. So that welcome screen, that home screen, of course, this is where you will want to Focus and keep an eye on, especially at the beginning. Look at that to-do list as your guide to check off all of the five items in that to-do list. Because once you fill out your registration form and complete those five items, only then will you be fully approved and registered for GA Gives on Giving Tuesday. Now there is a helpful link in each of those uh, items that you'll wanna check off your to-do list. There is a link that you can click on right in that item, which takes you directly to the place where you need to make that update. So when you want to sign up for EFT, you can click on that link in the to-do list and it'll take you right to the place on your page where you can add that information. So pay close attention to that to-do list right here up front. 
so that you make sure you complete all those required steps. Also, as I mentioned, you'll get announcements and updates from the GA Gives team. As well, you'll see the ability to get uh, up-to-date information on monthly activity through the platform in terms of visitors to your page, donations, donors, all that kind of good stuff, just to get a, a quick insight into the activity on your page. So the next item down the dashboard, as we talked about, is your profile. This is really the page that you wanna focus on, building out this page to tell a powerful story about the work that your organization does and why a donor or a supporter should be motivated to give during this campaign. So this is the, the main page that you'll wanna share. You have the ability to customize the look and feel, and now I'll show you some of the key things that you can do here. Uh, as a note, the logo and the background image are something that we're gonna talk about right here. These are two of those required items on that to-do list. So uh, right in the center of your page, you'll see the ability to upload your logo. Uh, this is best to use your organization's logo, one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So that means, most likely the best option if you don't already have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio for your logo, pull the logo that you're using on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, those places also need to have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So uh, if you already have a logo up on your Facebook page, that's probably already the right dimensions. You can pull that one and upload that directly here. You have the ability to select or upload a background image. So you'll see uh, GCN already has their background image updated here. It's a really great opportunity to just add an image that adds a little context for the donor when they visit your page. You have the option to select from a gallery. Uh, there's already a gallery on the platform with a handful of different images that are just there with a little uh, texture, but we definitely recommend taking the time to find a background image that really um, speaks to the work that your organization does and add that in there for extra effect. You'll see that you also have the ability to choose a filter color that goes over that background image and play around with the strength of that filter by gliding that little button along the sliding scale in that theme editor that's open. And the last option within this theme is setting a theme color for the page. So that green, color that you're seeing on the page on the donate button and throughout you have the opportunity to select your own theme color that really aligns with your brand with your logo clicking right into that theme color box will open up a color picker like you see for that filter color and all of these changes you're making live on the page while you're playing around with it so it's really easy to come to a design that you really like and feels like a strong representation of your organization's brand and mission. So the real meat of your page, once you have uh, customized that theme, is the ability to tell your story. This is what's gonna get donors excited about the work that you do, give them the chance to learn a little bit more and encourage them to make their gift. So you have access to an inline editor to tell your story in a powerful way. So rather than just adding a block of text in here, you can add formatting, lists, bullets, numbers, uh, you can add images, you can embed videos directly. Uh, you can also add a custom tab to share additional information. So we encourage you to use this key story section to really get to the heart of the message why should a donor give to your organization as a part of this campaign, as a part of this giving day? But you may have additional information you want accessible for visitors, whether it's information about upcoming events or volunteer opportunities or anything else that you might wanna share. You don't wanna distract from your key message, but you'd like to have that accessible. That would be a great opportunity to add a custom tab, which just creates an additional tab with the same inline editor here, for you to share additional information. Fully optional, but for some organization, it's, it's a great opportunity to share 
some of that additional content. As we move down the page, you'll see an opportunity to feature fundraising efforts. This is uh, similar to that campaign screen that I mentioned on the dashboard, a really great opportunity if you've got peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers started for your organization as a part of this campaign. Whether they are started by board members, volunteers, supporters, or campaigns that your organization has started to feature different programs or initiatives within your organization, all of those fundraisers will show on your page, but you have the opportunity to highlight some as your featured campaigns, featured efforts. If you have relevant active campaigns you really want to draw attention to and highlight. You also have the opportunity on your organization page to add additional media, additional photos. You can upload them from Facebook, Instagram, your computer, Dropbox. You can also connect your Instagram account directly so that anytime you add a new photo to your Instagram account, your Instagram gallery on your gagives.org page will automatically add the most recent image. So it's a great way to keep your page dynamic, up to date with fresh content without you having to come back and regularly add new information. All of that recent Instagram history will automatically flow in here. When it comes to social sharing, obviously this is a key part of um, how you may spread the word when it comes to the giving day. So you have the opportunity to optimize and customize the social share settings for your individual organization page. So by default, uh, the platform will pull in the logo that you've added to your page, as well as the first um, set of characters in that description that you've added to your page. But you may have a different image that really works well with social share. Or you may wanna change up the description to keep it super short and sweet, because the main goal when, of course, your link is shared on social is just to get the donor to click and visit the link. So you might want a little bit of a different description than you actually have right on the organization's page. So under your settings, under your organization um, <clears throat> settings, you have the ability to customize the social share experience of your page. You'll see throughout your page and um, really throughout the platform prompts to share Facebook, Twitter, and by email throughout. One of the other options that you have to share your campaign off platform is a donation widget that you can embed on your website. So um, from, from that profile, you'll have access to a page settings menu. And through that, you can access this widget. There's a couple different options on the widget. You can get the version like you're seeing here uh, with a donate button on it. You can get a widget that doesn't have a donate button on it, or you can just get a standalone donate button. This is something that you can embed on your organization's website, on your organization's blog, and it allows donors to make a secure gift to your organization without ever leaving that website. It is a simplified donor experience there it's going to be very streamlined, quick give solution, but it's a great way to um, make sure that you're capturing gifts wherever they might be coming from as a part of your GA Gives campaign. So we've walked through most of the items that you'll have to actually edit right on your profile page and a couple of those social and sharing settings. And now we're going to keep moving down the dashboard. The next item is your donations report. So by default, whenever a donation is made to your organization, anyone who has administrative access will receive an email notification. You can turn those off if you have the great problem of way too many donations and you're getting too many notifications. But by default, everyone will receive that notification. You can also at any time log into your organization's dashboard and access your donor data in real time. You'll see right on screen kind of a quick view 
but you will always have the ability to download the report and access all the detailed data related to any donations made to your organization. You can see here, you've got different options for filtering the report, et cetera. Um, and as I mentioned, there is also a disbursement report that you will be able to um, access disbursement details. This uh, is the second item down on that donations uh, tab on your dashboard. You can sign up for EFT through that disbursement settings button right at the top of this page. You'll also see uh, detailed reports. Uh, many of you may not be seeing anything there now because you've not received a disbursement through this platform. This will become helpful uh, right uh, once you receive your first donation on this platform or after the giving day in particular, when you receive an EFT disbursement, this is where you'll come to get a report on the details. We send out the funds twice a month when you're signed up for EFT disbursement, but all donations that are received for the uh, GA Gives event will be dispersed before the end of the year. So you will close out 2019 with all of your donations from the GA Gives campaign. <clears throat> Organizations also have the opportunity to add offline donations to their page if you have a donor that gives to you directly by a check or cash in person. Through your donations report, you have the option to add offline donation amounts. So you can choose whether you want these to show in your organization totals right on the page, whether you want the offline to be a part of your metrics for uh, the event, but you can easily add these offline donations, again, right through that donations report. I mentioned earlier that through that donations tab, you have the ability to customize the donor experience in a few key ways. The first is the actual checkout process that donors go through. There is a structured process that they will follow, and as Betsy mentioned, it is highly optimized and designed for conversion especially on mobile, but of course, across all different devices. But we give you some flexibility within that structure. First, you can choose what data you collect from donors. So you have the ability if, for example, phone number is a really critical piece of data that you wanna collect from donors, you can toggle a switch, turn that on to ask donors to give you their phone number. Now, it's up to you to decide what data you want to collect, but we always encourage you to think through that balance between what's all the information you might use for stewardship versus keeping the process quick and easy for donors. So you can decide what's the uh, right amount of questions to ask the donors, any additional questions, and just make sure that any that you ask are really critical and going to be useful for your stewardship. You also have the ability to set four custom donation suggestions. Uh, so this allows donors to give at certain levels. You know, for example, $25 buys one pound of food for animals in the shelter, or $100 provides training for two students. Whatever it might be that's meaningful and tangible for your organization and your mission, you can set those four custom donation levels so that when donors come and make their gift, they see the option to give at those levels and they're maybe encouraged to find a higher level because of the tangible impact you are able to help them relate to with their gift. Donors can also leave a dedication with their donation or they can select a designation if you have opted to come in and create designations that they can select from. And the final tool here is the ability to preview that donation experience. So right in that view checkout button at the top of this tab, you'll be able to walk through the process exactly as donors are seeing it. So your team, your board member, you can be really fully confident in exactly what that process is gonna look like for a donor before the event. And the second half of your donor experience is the thank you post checkout experience. So you have two key options to customize that post checkout experience. The first is building that thank you page. 
This is, you'll remember, one of those required items to complete on your to-do list. You'll have access to the same kind of inline editor that you saw on your main organization page to build out a thank you page. You can add a video here, you can add a photo here. You also have the ability to customize a button that will be available for donors on this page. If you want donors to learn more and come back to your website, if you wanna direct them to your Facebook page, if you wanna direct them to an upcoming event that you have going on, you can choose that next call to action that donors see immediately upon making their donation to your organization. You also have the opportunity to add a custom message that will be added into the automatic donation receipt that donors receive. So you can customize both of those. And then just like with the donation experience, you can preview what will this thank you page look like for my donors? What will the receipt look like for my donors? So all of those things you can customize and preview so that again, well ahead of the giving day, you feel really confident in exactly what that process looks like for your donors. The final item that you'll see on that dollar sign icon um, on your dashboard is a matching grants tool. Through the gagives.org platform, you have the ability to display a matching grant on your page to add extra urgency and excitement for donors. This is a really awesome option to take advantage of on a giving day in particular. The whole reason that a giving day is really fun and exciting for your donors to be a part of is because of that urgency that has been created by this event that you're a part of. Adding your own matching grant is just a way to go above and beyond on that. So you connect with the matching donor, they can fulfill their matching gift right to your organization directly, they don't have to pay through the platform, but what this tool gives you is a chance to add that match and promote that match right on your profile page. So you can recognize the matching donor if they'd like to be recognized. You can be sure that any of those matching grant totals are added into your organization totals. Um, you have flexible options, so you can do a one-to-one -one match, a two-to-one -one match. Uh, you can select a match just to be active for a specific hour of the day if you'd like. You can have multiple matches at a time or one that kicks off as soon as your previous match is met. So lots of different flexibility there. And again, the, the real benefit of this tool is that when donors come to visit your page and make their donation on Giving Tuesday, they are excited and encouraged by the fact that they know their impact will be doubled or tripled or whatever it might be by this additional match that you've been able to secure. Really great way to uh, increase your likelihood of success with your GA Gives campaign. So I mentioned your campaign screen. Likely, as I said, many of you won't have your uh, this available right now on your dashboard if you don't have campaigns started for your organization. But you'll see uh, uh, once you do have any campaign started, here's where you can access any fundraisers, any peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. You can download details. You can see contact information for anyone that has started a fundraiser for you. And you can also start a new fundraiser right from this tool if you'd like to. So your settings tab, the last item down on the bottom of your dashboard, is not to be overlooked. There are some great things that you can do right through this tool. So the first and one of the most important, especially here as we get started, is you can add or remove admins for your page. So if you have, once you have access to your organization's page on GA Gives, you can go in and decide if other people on your team also need access. If you find that there is an old contact on there that doesn't work for the organization anymore, so really easy for you to manage who has access to your organization's page on the platform. And as Betsy mentioned, this is a really great way to make sure that all of those people that are uh, needing to be in the loop get emails from GCN about Georgia Gives Day, 
Uh, it'll also make sure that they're all getting emails about those donations as they come in. Again, anyone can turn off donation notifications in their user profile if they don't need to get that. But it's great to make sure that whoever on your team should have access and be in the loop is added as an admin here. You can also, through this settings tab, update your legal name or your legal address. You will be able to update your display name or the display address that's shown on your page right directly on the page when you've got the editor open. But because we sync regularly with the IRS database, if you'd like to make a change to your legal name, and that's different from the legal name as it is in the IRS database, for example, you can do that. You'll just need to upload documentation to prove that change. And then the customer support team here at Mighty Cause will approve that for you. So changing legal name or address can be done through your settings page. This is also where you can sign up for EFT disbursement. Uh, I've mentioned it a few times before, but it is a quick and easy process for EFT disbursement sign up. You'll add your routing number and your account number. And in many cases, that information, along with your organization's name, is enough for us to look up the account in the database that we partner with and approve the EFT. There may be times when you need to add additional data in the form of a voided check or a bank letter, but it is a quick and easy sign up to get your organization set up for EFT. Again, that's another one of those required items on the to-do list. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, customizing the social share settings for your profile page, customizing the URL of your organization page, those can both be done through this settings tab as well. All right, so we have covered all the great things you can do on your page. So I just wanted to take a quick moment to recap your key five items that you're gonna wanna focus on first. A background image, a logo, and a description on your organization's profile page, building out that thank you, that first touch point with donors right after they make their gift, and signing up for electronic funds transfer disbursement. So ben, Betsy mentioned this earlier, but it bears repeating how to get help as you go throughout this process, have questions. The Mighty Cause team is here to support you. We are fully staffed Monday to Friday. Um, the best way to reach us is over email, but there is a phone number as well uh, for some of those that you just need to talk to somebody on the phone and get your questions answered. We do have a phone number as well. Um, but the quickest way to receive support is by emailing support at mightycause.com. That's going to be best for any questions on the platform, how to use it, how to make updates to your page, et cetera. Any questions on GA Gives, the, the event that's being hosted, any prizes, that you can all send directly to info at gagives.org. But a great place to start is on gagives.org. There are all kinds of resources available for you from FAQs for you as nonprofits, as well as FAQs geared towards donors. So you might learn more from there as well. There are support articles and helpful resources all available in the nonprofit toolkit that's really designed to help you get up and running quickly, make your campaign a success. So make sure to check out all the resources that you have available to you there. And then, of course, contact us if you have additional questions. And with that, I'm going to open it up to see what kind of questions that we've had come in. We're right around 240. Uh, so I will take uh, I'll take some time to answer any questions that have come in. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the control panel now. All right. Let's see. Good question here. Is there a word limit or a length to that story description? So the minimum to have your story complete to check off that item on the to-do list is you'll need to have at least 50 words in there. There is a maximum character limit, but you have lots of space to work with. I would say 
keep it short and sweet uh, is, is probably a helpful guideline. Uh, we know how short donor attention spans can be. So make sure that you focus on adding the right kind of content in there, not just trying to add a ton of information. Focus on what's really going to get the donors excited about making their gift. And again, those additional tools like formatting or images and videos, that helps to fill out that section, share important content, but to make it really easy for the donor to read. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, somebody has a question here on the correct URL to log in. Um, and it's a URL of gcn.force.com. Uh, I'm going to say no. The correct URL to get started is gagives.org. If you go to gagives.org slash welcome, if you have an existing account or you had an existing account on the platform, going to gagives.org slash welcome will be a quick way for you to jump right into that password reset process to access your account. Uh, next question down here. Does the system send an automatic email to the donor as well? And the answer is yes. The donor will receive an automatic tax receipt when they complete their donation. And you'll have the opportunity in that donor experience tab that I showed you to add custom information that will be inserted into that receipt that is sent to the donors. And again, you can preview that receipt through that tab as well. All right, scrolling down. Uh, question, will there be a replay of this webinar? This webinar is being recorded and it will be up on the gagives.org website under that nonprofit toolkit. So you can always access the recording and rewatch it there. Uh, question here, are the click and pledge campaigns we used in the past dead, null, and void? Uh, Betsy, I don't know if you have anything you'd like to add on this uh, click and pledge piece in particular. Um, I know that uh, your click and pledge account still exists at this point. It's just no longer associated with gagives.org. So I believe it's yours to choose. Do you want to continue using click and pledge as an external solution that's not associated with GA gives? Yes, um, reconfirming that um, you do have an account still with click and pledge, but there's no longer a profile page associated with it. And that profile page, in my understanding, has been deleted. That site is down and, and not um, you're not able to access it anymore. All right, thank you. Right. Scrolling down to um, some more questions here. Do we need to pay something for this year? I'm assuming that is a question of uh, registration fee for the event. Uh, there is no registration fee to sign up for GA Gives. I don't know, uh, Betsy, if there's anything else you like to share on that in terms of membership or anything as it relates to GCN, but there's no fee to register for GA Gives on Giving Tuesday. No, that's correct. Um, we continue to just host this for the community. Um, you'll want to look in the FAQs and see, you know, understand the processing fees um, that are paid. Um, Bethany, if you'd like to share some information about that uh, around the donor boost option, that's a really very exciting new tool that we have on this platform that I actually believe is going to reduce um, reduce the expenses for participating nonprofits by quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to, to share that. So um, as Betsy mentioned, there is, uh, similar to what you might have seen in the past, a platform fee and a transaction fee that will be associated with donations made on the platform. The details of these fees are always available uh, for reference in the FAQs, um, but there is a 2% uh, platform fee along with a 2.2% plus 30 cent credit card fee, unless you're using Amex and then it's a bit higher for Amex. Um, but the really exciting thing is that donors are encouraged to cover all of those fees for you with a simple checkbox right in their checkout process. 
And when they cover those fees, which in a giving day experience, uh, typically, it's about 80 to 90 percent of donors that will cover those fees for you. That means that there will be no fees taken out of your donations if the co donor covers it for you. So um, as Betsy, Betsy mentioned, a really exciting opportunity to hopefully reduce the overall uh, effective rate that you see uh, in terms of fees on any donations associated with this Gives Day and the platform. Um, next question is, uh, the address and the business name are showing as inaccurate on your profile. I would confirm uh, first and foremost that the EIN number associated with your profile is correct. Uh, the, the EIN is the key uh, unique identifier across organizations. So be sure that the EIN is correct for your organization. And if the EIN is correct, but the address and business name are incorrect, uh, then it's either because the IRS doesn't have the up-to-date information or it's something that you can uh, you can update for us. So that would be something that, again, you do in that settings tab, click on update legal address. You'll give us the new address as well as documentation to show that new address. And then our customer support team will be able to verify if it matches with the IRS and if it doesn't match with the IRS, does your documentation give us enough ability to make those changes for you? All right. So a uh, question here is, I have an account, but I'm not seeing anything. Am I fully registered yet? So when you log into your user account on the platform, the first thing you'll want to do is in the upper right hand corner of the screen, you can hover over a little user icon and you'll see a drop down menu. From there, click on the dashboard that has your organization's name on it. That is going to open you up into your organization's dashboard, which was all of the tools that we talked about today. And on that home screen, the first item on that dashboard, you will see your registration status. So you'll see if you're not yet registered for GA Gives, if your registration is still pending because you haven't completed those to-do list items, or if you're fully registered. Let me just pipe in that. Um, so that sure. very short registration form, you know, that takes everyone probably about 30 seconds, um, 10 seconds. Um, after you complete that, those five items, you'll, you'll be registered, but you need to complete the five items in order for your page to go live. So you won't be, it won't be searchable until you've completed the items. Great. The next question down is, can individual donors who start campaigns share those campaigns on social? Yes, absolutely. So just as you have access to the social sharing prompts, Facebook, Twitter, uh, on your page, any individual fundraiser that starts their own campaign to support your organization also has those tools to share their campaign on social. Um, next question to input to our databases, we'll have to do an import. I'm not seeing any automatic integration. Um, that is correct as of right now. You will be able to download a CSV uh, file of all of your donation reports. Though I will say a tool that is uh, an advanced feature on the Mighty Cause platform, something that likely we'll be opening up to everyone before uh, GA Gives Day, does have additional options for automatic integration into uh, a number of external databases. So stay tuned for that. Um, next question is when does the campaign begin? Um, I believe, Betsy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, November 1st is when donations start uh, being eligible for this year's event. Correct, starting November 1st and culminating on December 3rd. Great. <laughs> Great. Um, let's see, moving down. All right, great question. Um, I see in one of the screenshots that the donor can see the number of donations and donors or total that has been received so far. Um, an organization is saying that they'd rather not uh, publicize that information from the past. 
uh, you can choose on your organization's page what metrics you'd like to show. If you'd like to show a donor count, if you'd like to show a dollar count, you can choose that. And you can also choose uh, when you'd like to start counting those metrics from. So we would certainly encourage that before the GA Gives campaign starts, you reset those metrics to start counting from November 1st. That way donors visiting your page will be able to see uh, what you've raised for this um, campaign in particular. Um, but, um, sorry, lost my train of thought, <laughs> um, but it's up to you. Uh, in your profile page settings, you can control those metrics. You can also add a thermometer. I don't think I mentioned that, but you can add a thermometer to your page. So if you have a specific goal you're trying to reach for this giving day, $5,000, $10,000, you can add a thermometer with that goal amount to your page so that donors can see progress towards that goal. Uh, great question. Is the platform fee taken out of each donation? Yes. So the way transaction fees will work is they'll be on each donation. But again, each donor has the opportunity and is encouraged to cover those fees on each donation. So you will only be responsible for the fee if the donor chooses not to cover that. Um, here's a question. Are transaction fees waived on Giving Tuesday? Facebook did this last year. Um, Betsy, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to add um, after I share just a little bit myself. Um, there are not, the transaction fees are not waived on Giving Tuesday when you're using the gagives.org platform. Um, it's a very different platform than Facebook for many reasons, including all the tools that you have access to. And one of the very key things is the donor data that you get access to on this platform. Um, so it's just a different platform than Facebook uh, with a different uh, concept and key goals in mind. Um, I don't know if you have anything you want to share there, Betsy. No, I think I think you've said it. Yeah. Um, if as uh, Bethany uh, had indicated earlier, if you do want to have a total that sort of captures, you know, your total from other platforms as well, you are welcome to upload it so that you will see a grand total on your page. Um, so you could upgrade, you could up, uh, load your Facebook totals if you wanted to. Yes, absolutely. You know, the, the goal, I think, of this event is, is that your team is really looking to show the giving that's happening all across the state. So if you receive donations on Facebook, that's absolutely something that you can add as an offline gift to your page. And I will just add that um, it was very interesting to get the um, to get the survey results that many of you responded to early in the year. And one of the trends that we have seen is that there is more and more interest on your end to explore other donation platforms, particularly Facebook. So we understand you have options, and you know this site is here as a resource, as a tool. Uh, that GCN, you know, kind of puts out there for the community, um, how you choose to run your campaign, whether it's through this site, which we think is terrific and a great opportunity for you. But there's lots of different approaches to running campaigns, and you all are going to need to figure out what it is, you know, that works for, best for you. And I think Bethany's point around the value add, uh, the, the work that we do to drive folks to this website, there's a lot of value there, um, but it's really ultimately up to you to decide. Great. And I think on that, we are just about at the end of all of our questions. Um, if you have any additional questions, please uh, feel free to um, email, like we mentioned, either support at mightycause.com if it's a specific trying to get your page set up or work things out on, on that end. Bigger questions about the GA Gives event. Please feel free to uh, contact. Uh, info at gagives.org. Again, thanks for your time today. We're looking forward to working with you all and uh, happy fundraising. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.